Hello and welcome to Poseidon Tech. This is a KNX project without a KNX IP interface. So to program the KNX devices, I will connect a KNX bus cable in an electrical cabinet KNX connector. Then I will connect this cable to a KNX USB interface like the one shown here. By the way, if you want to learn more about this USB interface, please watch my step-by-step -step tutorial. You will find the link in the description below this video. Next, I will connect the KNX USB interface on my Mac. As you can see, I have a lot of KNX bus cable allowing me to move around the house. That sound you just heard? That was my Mac hitting a wall. I will also attempt to go up the stairs. I believe that you understand that this is not the most practical setup. And when it comes to checking the outdoor lights, I have to carry my Mac, the USB interface and the cable outside. One more step and I will continue this tutorial underwater. Today's episode is about this wireless alternative to the USB interface, the KNX IP interface 740.1 from Vinechill. Let's unbox it. The wireless programming interface comes in this beautiful case. It uses its own KNX bus connector and inside the case you will find a spare one. The connector is the same as the one used by Vancher's USB interface. Inside the case you will also find a quick installation guide. On the front of the device you will find the KNX LED, the Wi-Fi LED and the RAN LED. There's also a diagram explaining the different LED modes. This is the test button. By pressing it, you can switch through the Wi-Fi channels. The wireless interface operates in 2.4 GHz range. The test button allows you to switch between the non-overlapping channels 1, 6 and 11. Here is the programming button and the programming LED. This is the KNX bus connector. And of course, this is the antenna. The wireless interface is powered only via the KNX bus, so all we have to do is connect the KNX bus cable. The next step is to connect our laptop to the device's Wi-Fi. As you can see, the default Wi-Fi name of the device is KNX IP interface 740.1. The default password is located on the back of the device.
Once connected, the Wi-Fi LED is steady green, indicating that my laptop is connected to the wireless interface. Now let's move on to ETS6. Clicking on Connection Manager, you will notice that ETS6 has automatically discovered the KNX wireless interface. I will select it and run some tests including Partial download Download all Group monitor Device in programming mode Individual address check And line scan The wireless interface is truly plug and play, like a KNX USB interface. Of course, if you want to change the device parameters, it's possible by adding the device in your project. To do so, open Catalog Panel. Navigate to Venture. Search for 740. Add 740.1 interface to your project. The KNX wireless interface supports up to 8 connections simultaneously and separate individual address is used for each connection. In the general settings you can choose the devices mode, with the default one being access point mode. To modify the Wi-Fi name, simply expand the properties menu and change device's name. As an example, I will set my new Wi-Fi name to Poseidon Tech. I will change also the individual address. Wi-Fi password is set to none, but I will change it using a WPA2 password. At times, you may experience Wi-Fi dropouts or slowness, often occurring when multiple Wi-Fi devices share the same channel. In the 2.4 GHz range, Wi-Fi channels range from 1 to 13, but there are only three non-overlapping channels, 1, 6 and 11. You can change the Wi-Fi channel either in the parameters or directly from the device test button. Press the test button once to switch to test mode. For channel selection, long press for Wi-Fi channel 1. The Wi-Fi LED flashes one time in green. Long press for Wi-Fi channel 6. The Wi-Fi LED flashes two times in green. Long press for Wi-Fi channel 11. The Wi-Fi LED flashes three times in green. Press test button to exit test mode. Please note that when using the test button, the selected Wi-Fi channel will not be stored in the device. I will keep the default Wi-Fi name for easy recognition. In the IP configuration, you can modify the device's IP address using either DHCP or static settings. Note that these IP settings are only applicable in station client mode. We are currently connected to the KNX wireless interface that is in access point mode. While this is a quick way to perform basic downloads in ETS6, the drawback is that I don't have an internet connection. Without an internet connection, the online catalog cannot be used. To resolve this issue, the KNX wireless interface must be set to station client mode and connected to an existing Wi-Fi network. In my installation, the Wi-Fi network isn't ready yet, so I will connect the wireless interface to my iPhone's hotspot. My iPhone's Wi-Fi name is Poseidon.tech and the password is Sky is the limit. The wireless interface supports WPS, which stands for Wi-Fi Protected Setup, making the Wi-Fi connection easy. However, for now, I will not use it, so let's move on. To download the configuration into the wireless interface, I will use my USB interface.
Before continuing with the setup, I will navigate to my iPhone settings. Next, I will tap on Personal Hotspot and I will enable Maximize Compatibility to have my iPhone act as a 2.4 GHz access point. The KNX wireless interface has successfully connected to my iPhone's hotspot. I will also connect my Mac to the iPhone's hotspot. ETS6 has successfully discovered the KNX wireless interface. Now that I have an internet connection, the online catalog is available. Before closing this tutorial, let me show you how to reset the KNX wireless interface to factory default settings. Disconnect the KNX bus connection from the device. Press the programming mode button and keep it pressed down. Reconnect the KNX bus connection to the device. Keep the programming mode button pressed for at least another 6 seconds. A short flashing of all LEDs visualizes the successful reset of the device to factory default settings. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. If you find our tutorials helpful, don't forget to like our videos and subscribe to our channel to stay updated with the upcoming KNX tutorials. Until then, happy KNXing and I will see you in the next episode.